replay viewers. So just waiting for Jay to um, finish up um, because he's going to raid into the broadcast. So if you're here, um, or you ha if you're here um, whilst Jay's still on, then uh, I'm not going to start until another couple more minutes. Okay, so um, but I will tell you what I'm cooking and uh, give you the insight into what's happening next month. So uh, obviously, if you're watching this on a replay, uh, then welcome. Uh, don't forget you can follow me on Patreon, which is where you can uh, gain access to exclusive streams that I do on a Saturday. So even though we do this once a month, uh, I will be doing uh, like an exclusive broadcast. Every, not every Saturday, but maybe one, you know, every two weeks, every fortnight or so. So I know last week I did cupcakes, and then the week before I made I made a cake. So, um, so yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So I know Jay's currently on. That's why I've come on a little bit earlier, just because um, he is going to raid into the broadcast. But I'm not sure if he knows how to do it or not. So it, it doesn't matter if not. And I know he's still on. And but uh, it's not going to take me a long time to do this recipe. So tonight I am making. It's a grilled goat's cheese with a broad bean pancetta and mint salad. So the theme is sal soups and salads, and I've chose to do this one. Now it was requested actually, it's a James Martin recipe and it's from, let me show you, I don't know if, I don't know if, I remember last time showing a book and then it, it for some reason, it, this is the book here. So I know we did this before like the recipes but this is a salad book from James Martin. So uh, there he is. So let's show you then what you're going to need for this. So you're going to need some ciabatta breads. So I'll show you what I'm using first, ciabatta breads. Okay, you're going to need some olive oil. I'm going to use rapeseed oil. Okay, so that should be okay. Uh, I do have a little bit of olive oil actually in my uh, um, can, bottle. Uh, you're going to need some pancetta, 125 grams. So it's a bit wet there, it's been in the fridge. So a bit of diced pancetta there. Um, you're going to need garlic, so we've got some garlic here, and we're going to also need a red onion, so I'll just show you this, there we go, and uh, balsamic vinegar, so here's the balsamic vinegar, okay, and uh, you're also going to need uh, the goat's cheese, so let's get this out, goat's cheese. So this is uh, this one here. Hello, Brenda. Good to see you. So we're still waiting for people to join because I know Jay's still on, uh, but he's going to raid into the broadcast. So we should get we should get a flux of people coming through soon. I'm just going through the ingredients. So this is goat's cheese. Okay, so that's the goat's cheese I'm using. This one's called Kidderton Ash. It's a speckled ash crusted goat's cheese. And uh, does it say where it's from? It's from uh, look Inglewhite. I think that's. I think that's a part of it's got PR as the postcode so I'm not sure actually where that is PR I'm not sure anyway so there's the goat's cheese pop that to one side you're also going to need uh, now this is what I was doing for the last half an hour so I got some frozen broad beans um, but it actually needs to be defrosted and peeled so I've been peeling these look at the beautiful colour on those so I put them in some water and they've defrosted and I've peeled them so you want 100 no you want 225 grams which is eight ounces of broad beans now this is to say these are fro although it says frozen broad beans they do need to be defrosted so uh, as i say i think it, the reason it's def um, the reason it's frozen is because it keeps the freshness um, and that's all what you want in this in this dish it looks really nice this this recipe so Okay, and you're also then going to need some pesto. Now, it didn't define what sort of pesto. I thought um, this was this is fine, green pesto. Uh, it does require also basil, and I'm just looking at this. This has actually got basil in it, so I think pesto is basil, isn't it, if I'm right? Uh, I'm not sure. And then also we're going to be using some uh, fresh mint. So I've got some nice, nice fresh mint here. Oh, that smells so good and we actually only need uh, two tablespoons of chopped fresh mint so a few of them leaves will be great okay and then finally you're gonna need some salt uh, and pepper now I've got some Himalayan salt here that I'm gonna use 
um, but it says rock salt, so I've literally got a tiny amount. So, hey everybody, welcome everyone, you're all here. Did he, did he do it or did he finish? Jay, if, you, if you're there, if you can hear me, did you manage to raid? Did you do it? It seems like you've done it. Oh, I didn't have the chat box. Don't worry, don't worry. So I've just been going through the ingredients, what we're going to be using. So I'll just go through it again really quickly. So tonight, tonight we are doing grilled goat's cheese with a broad bean pancetta and mint salad. So it's from James Martin's uh, book, one of his early day, early books. So if I'm repeating for replay viewers, one of his very early books. This is how it's hopefully going to look. You can see that. So it's something a bit different for me because I, I never do anything like this. I'm, I'm not, when it comes to cooking, I like to do recipes maybe that I've had before. And But it does look okay. I don't I don't think it's going to take me very long to make. So we'll we'll give it a try. So that's what it looks like. Uh, so I'll just go through the ingredients again. So we've got some ciabatta breads. Hey, Mel, good to see you. So we've got some ciabatta breads. We've got the olive oil. You've got the pancetta, 125 grams. This serves for two people, I should say. You're gonna need a quarter of a red onion. Okay, hello Bill, good to see you. Uh, you're gonna need some garlic. So nice garlic there. Okay, uh, balsamic vinegar. So I'll just show you this. There we go, balsamic vinegar. So uh, you're gonna need the goat's cheese. So you want 100 grams, which is three and a half ounces of goat's cheese, and we're gonna cut that in half and grill it. Uh, you want pesto, green pesto, and we're gonna need some fresh mint. And I'll just show you here. Got some fresh mint here. Oh, that smells so good. Look at the color, and then also, this is what I was doing when Jay was on. I was peeling the broad beans. So we've got some broad beans here, 225 grams. And um, you want some black pepper and some salt. So let's make a start then. So I've not chopped anything up or done anything like that. So let's make a start. Now, we are on landscape. Now, I should say next month is uh, up to you. There were three suggestions. So you can choose any of them. Don't just think it's going to be that. You can just you can choose between the three. We've got the uh, entree, which is five ingredients. I think it was water, oil, butter salt and pepper i think it was i think butter was butter there jay if you're there um so there's the five ingredients you can do that one you can either so that's option a you can either do option b which was find stuff in your fridge so if you've got any leftovers any anything in your fridge on the day bring it all together and cook something or number three option c would would be picnic food so you you can choose between all three a b or c uh, on the day and that will be on the 23rd of July 23rd of July so make make a note write it down in your diary right let's get cracking with this then because uh, it's going to take me a while so I'm going to spin you down hopefully you can uh, you can see this please don't fall off <laughs> come on it worked earlier fingers crossed is it going to stay let me just tighten that up fingers crossed oh no it's going to fall off isn't it Oh dear. Sorry guys. Oh no. Too heavy. Oh, is it going to hold? Please hold. No. I might have to spin you down. Sorry everybody. Oh, one minute. Let's try. This is why I don't like Twitch so much. I might have to... Right. Fingers crossed. Stay, stay, stay. No. Bear with me guys, I didn't test this before. I might have to do it there instead. <laughs> right, let's just move this out of the way. We just, we'll just, we'll improvise. No, you don't want to see the sink, do you? Right. One minute, one minute, one minute. Let's tighten this up. Is that better? Ah, I think we're good. We're good. We're good. Right, let's keep it there. Let's keep it there. Right, so first thing we're going to do then, uh, it says preheat the oven. If you're using an oven, uh, it wants to be 200 Celsius, 400 Fahrenheit, gas mark 6. I'm going to be using the Ninja today. So uh, it says place the slices of bread on an oven, pre oven proof dish and drizzle with some olive oil. So let's cut these ciabattas up first. Can you all see that okay? I'll try and read the comments at the end. 
So let's get this done first. So let's cut this. So I'm, what I'm going to do is cut these, cut these in half and get them on the ninja so they're ready. Okay. So let me cut this up. So slice this in half. So that's one. Okay, and that's two. So what I'm going to do is pop these. I've got a nice little griddle plate here. So hopefully it will fit them all on. So it's very similar to when I did, do you remember the Mexican stew? Okay, I'm just going to pop them on there. Should be enough. That should fit. There we go. So I'm going to pop them on the Ninja. So they're ready. I'm going to drizzle with some olive oil, I think. Uh, so drizzle with olive oil. So let me just check if there's any in there. A little bit. So I'll drizzle with this some olive oil. And I'll show you this in a second. I'm just using some of that olive oil that I've got in this bottle. This is actually a reusable bottle. You can get them online and then you can uh, refill them up. Okay, um, right, so next thing then, it says in a hot pan we're going to cook the pancetta without any added fat until crisp. But let me just cut up the onion first. Okay, so let's cut this up. So after me, we have Gemma. Gemma's up next. So I will raid you, Gemma. Um, right, so let's cut this up. Where's my knife? Let's use this knife. So we're gonna cut the end off. like that. Nice bit down, my, down half. Take the skin off. It says only a quarter of the onion so you don't want too much onion. So I think that's enough. Even half's more than enough isn't it? So let's just use half. Okay and it says we need to peel and dice. So let's dice this up. That's what I'm going to use. Actually, let's do we do it length? Wait, no, we'll do it. Let's cut that in half. We'll use the nicer dicer. Uh, one moment. Um, nicer dicer. Okay, so we'll use this because it's got the nice blades. Put that through. That's it. That's one. And let's do the second one. Push it through. There we go, perfect. So it's all nicely cut up. Okay, can we all see okay? Is everybody okay? Yep, good, good. Right, so we're gonna we'll pop that to one side. So there's the uh, nice chopped onions. Okay. Next step then it says um I'm just looking to see what else I need to chop up. Now the mint. So it says it, we need two tablespoons of chopped mint. Now I've got a little tip for you. I'm just going to take some of this mint off. But a very quick way of cutting mint is to use a pizza knife. So let's take some of these leaves off. Stalks as well. Although you don't want to take all the leaves off your plant if you've got a plant. Otherwise it won't grow. So just take off... I think that's enough, but with it being a mint salad, I do want slightly more mint. So what, what I'm going to do now is just use one of these pizza, pizza cutter and just just use it. I did this actually on the, another app, which you all know, and then just roll it. Oh, it smells so good. And it says that you need two tablespoons. I might actually do some more of this. Actually, that might be enough, actually. Now, I'll do a little bit more. Let's cut up a little bit more. So just take off the leaves. OK. 
okay? Chatting amongst yourselves, guys, I hope. What are we making, Aidan? Oh, you love mint, says Jay. We're doing a grilled goat's cheese with broad bean pancetta and mint salad. I'll put the light on so you can see a little bit better. It smells so good. I think I need more mint, so I'm gonna again I'm just gonna cut some more off. So oops, nearly dropped my scissors then. So mint is one of those plants that grows so quick. It's like a uh if you have mint in your garden, it will actually uh What's the word I'm looking for, Gemma? Gemma's a gardener as well, but it, it just literally grows. And it takes over the garden. If, you, if you're lucky enough to have mint. Oh, it smells so good. I think that's enough. I don't need too much. As I say, it's only for two portions, so make sure you get it all off. Okay, we've not even started cooking yet. <laughs> but it won't take too long, I don't think, this. I actually have a, a little quiz for you as well. I've got some soup questions that was in the book. So I'm just going to move that to one side. There's the mint. Can you smell it, everyone? Can you smell it? All right, so we'll pop, pop that to one side. So we're now going to get on to the cooking. So I've got a nice pan here. Frying pan's fine. And first thing I'm going to do, that it says in a hot pan, we're going to cook the pancetta. So we're going to turn this on. Let's get this nice and hot. So here's the goat's cheese, um, Jay. You can see the goat's cheese. It's nearly 35 degrees. Oh my goodness. That's hot. So here's the pancetta. So in a hot pan, can you all see that? Okay. Yep. We're going to cook the pancetta without any added fat. So let's get this in the pan. So what is pancetta, you ask? It's basically, uh, it's cubes of pork belly smoked over beech wood. So this is 150 grams here, so you only need 125. So let's get that in. So obviously it's not sizzling just yet. So get all that in. Okay, and it says, uh, place the slices of bread on an oven-proof tray drizzle with all. Bake in the oven for five minutes. So what I'm going to do is switch on my Ninja and I'm going to press the bake function. I'm just going to lightly um, bake the ciabattas. It says bake in the oven for five minutes until it's crisp. So I'm just going to put it on the bake for, let's put it on for three minutes. I think three minutes is enough, 180. Okay. Right, I can read some of the comments. Uh, Jay says he loves goat cheese. Melanie loves goat cheese. I think Melanie, you're gonna you'd love this dish. I think because it's basically um, ciabatta bread with grilled goat cheese, broad beans, pancetta, and then the mint the mint salad uh, with onion as well. <laughs> it's really different, it's really different, I like it. Well, I hope I like it, and it's got pesto in this as well. Oh, and garlic, and garlic. So, so we're just going to wait for this to um, until crisp and turn golden brown. Then we're going to add in some diced garlic. Now, this is what Melanie bought me. She sent this to me. Do you remember this, Melanie? That crushes the garlic. So I did, I couldn't find it actually, so, so I'm just going to... Uh, crush that okay I actually have this gadget here as well which what you do is you put the garlic in and then I don't know if I can show you I can show you here can you see see there here on the left well that's cooking and you just roll it and then look at that it just comes straight out oh, can't see because the light but it's basically just come out of this of its uh, skin Look at that guys, really really easy. I'll just do the second one. So I'm going to put two pieces of garlic in this. Oh, I broke that one up. I broke it. I broke it. Oh, never mind. Never mind. But it is really really good. It's the skin off. 
I actually probably only need one piece of garlic, but... And then with the... With this... You can't see that, I'm making a mess. With this, you just push it and then all, all the garlic comes off. So... What I'm going to do though, I'm not going to use that at the minute. <laughs> because I've, I've just crushed it, so it's going to go everywhere anyway. So I'm just going to get that ready. I'm going to put it through my garlic press. The other garlic press, just pop that to one side. Get rid of this. What happens when you live cooking? That's it. And I'm just going to check the ciabattas. Looking good. I'm going to give that another minute actually. Another two minutes, just so it, it crisps up, but it's not, you know, golden brown. So I'll give it two more minutes. Right. So with this, we're just going to just move these around. Oh, put the goat's cheese next to the air fryer. To make sure this is golden brown. Oh, thanks, Jay. Uh, sorry, thanks, Rick. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but as I say, this is enough for two portions. It's it's more about the more about the taste and the quality of the food rather than the amount, which is something I might consider doing actually in the future. You know, smaller portion sizes, but full of flavour. If you know what I mean. This smells really good. So we're just going to wait for this to cook. Uh, and then what we do is we add the diced garlic, we're going to add some onions, and we're going to add two, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and cook for one minute. Right, I'm just going to check that. That looks fine to me. So I'm going to turn off the ninja. So if I just show you how it looks right now. So the ciabatta breads, as I say, I put them with some oil. I put some olive oil on the top. So they're just nice and crispy there. They're not overly overly cooked. It's not overly brown, should I say. So I'm going to close that. How are we doing, guys? Good position, isn't it? It's not a bad position. So I'm just going to uh, move that around, let it cook away. And then after this, it says we're going to grill the goat's cheese on the bread. So preheat the grill, put the goat's cheese on the bread and then season with salt and pepper and drizzle with more olive oil. Place under the grill until golden brown. So that's after this salad part's done. So it's quite an easy recipe, really. I mean, you could do this with bacon lardons if you wanted to. Um, it's kind of like a like a brunch style. What do you think? It's like a brunch style snack, or maybe you could have it for breakfast. I don't know. It's something a little bit different. So I'm just wondering when it says to add the beans. Oh, right. yeah. So we add the beans afterwards. So it says remove from the heat, and then we add the beans. Pesto and the mince to the bacon mix. I'm guessing the beans have to be cooked. Hmm. Because it doesn't say how to cook them. It just says frozen broad beans, defrosted and peeled. Blanch them in, oh, it says blanch them in boiling water for 30 seconds, then drain. Cover with cold water to stop them cooking and drain again. Peel off the outer skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to add my beans with the onions. I'm going to add the beans with the onions because I want them to cook. I think that's the best thing because you're meant to really boil boil the beans. What do you reckon I do guys? It just said blanch them in boiling water for 30 seconds. It doesn't tell me how to cook them. Oh. Yeah these are getting nice and crispy now. Look at them. Yum, 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 yum. This is uh, pancetta. Now let's add in the garlic. Actually, I'd probably have to add the beans in now, wouldn't I? <laughs> so we're going to add in the garlic, onion and vinegar. So I've had the onions in first. So let's add the onions. Get them frying. Mix all that in. Uh, 
I'm going to add in the garlic. Oh, this smells so nice. Oh, I wish you could smell this, everyone. Let's add another piece of garlic in. Because I find that adding just a small amount of garlic these days doesn't... You can't taste it, if you know what I mean. So add a bit more garlic. Okay. And then we're going to add in some uh, balsamic vinegar. So it needs three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So I've actually got a proper measuring thing here. Three tablespoons. Okay, so this is a tablespoon. There we go. 150 ml. And we're adding three of these in. Three to one. Two, three, done. So mix all that in. Oh, the smell coming off this, guys. It smells so good. Oh, got it right up my nose then as well. <laughs> wow. So it says cook together just for a minute. That's all it says, cook for a minute. And then it says remove from the heat. But I'm gonna add the I'm gonna add the beans in now, I think. What do you think? Shall I add the beans? Add the peeled beans pesto and mint to the bacon mix. But I don't know if that needs to be on the on the hob or not. What do you think, guys? Oh, I got adverts. Sorry. I don't know whether to add the beans in or not because they're hard. Hmm. Right. Let's do the cheese. We'll do the cheese in just a second. I could add them to boiling water, couldn't I? Let's do that. I'll add the beans to boiling water and let them sit for a few minutes, and then I can add it. I think that's the best thing to do. Well, them, them onions need to cook a little bit longer. Right, let's do the goat's cheese. So, while that's cooking. So here's the goat's cheese. So, it's nicely packaged. Nice big sticker there. Never used, never seen goat's cheese before, like in this form. You can only see it on a pizza. <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look at the goat's cheese. Oh, is that what it looks There it is, that's it, isn't it? That must be it. Yeah, that's the goat's cheese. Sorry, guys. So we're going to cut this up. I'm just going to cut this up on my chopping board. I think that's. I think that's done guys, so I'm going to turn that off, just move this to one side, here's the paper to wrap it up. Right, so I've got more goat's cheese here, I don't know. let's just lift you up a bit, oh sorry. So here's the goat's cheese, and it says you need, I'm going to keep it in its paper so I don't, and it says you need um, 100 grams, 100 grams, and I've got 150, I think, here. Yeah, 150. So I want three quarters of this. Three quarters. Of, I'm just going to cut this up. Okay, let me... In fact, <laughs> I'm trying to do too much at once. Let me just put these beans in some hot boiling water. Because at least then... So it's hot boiling water here. At least then, I know it's going to... Yeah, I mean, I could have steamed them, really, but... So I'm going to pop the beans in here. Just going to let them sit for... Sit them for about five minutes. At least then I know it's cooked. Right, so let's do the, the goat's cheese. So we're going to cut this up into small pieces. This is where I'm going to pop them on the top. So let me just show you this. 
Uh, I'd actually, I don't know if you can see it or not. No, you can't see it. I'll have to take you out. So let's flip the camera. Flip, double tap. Okay, so we put the, we're going to put the uh, pieces of goat's cheese on each one. I don't know if to put two on. I think two. Do you think two is enough? To make these a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think I think more goat's cheese is fine. And we're going to grill these. Don't think they're too big. Don't, what do you think? I don't know if you meant to cut the ends off. Are you meant to cut the ends off? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grill this for until it's golden brown. So I'm going to press start, press grill. Yeah, we'll put it on high. Does it say grill? Yep. It's going to be grilled. Uh, oh, we need some salt and pepper on here as well. So I'm going to have to just uh, flip you around. Sorry, everybody. So I'm just going to add some salt and pepper on the top of these. And I need a bit more olive oil as well. And trust me, this is going to look amazing. Um, because I've never done this sort of thing before, so it's all new to me. Drizzle with some olive oil. So a little bit more olive oil on the top of them. If I've got any left, yep. Oh, it's, it looks amazing. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it on, bring the lid down. And I'm gonna put it on for five minutes. Five minutes should be enough on high. Oh, another advert, do I do delivery? <laughs> I'll have to start doing delivery, shouldn't I? So we're just going to wait for the beans to... Oh, you've got an advert. I'll wait till you got to we're back. Okay, I'm just reading the next step. I'll stand back a little bit. So we've got our mix here. Let that sit on there for a bit while the uh, pancetta and um, while the goat's cheese is grilling. Uh, we're going to add the peeled beans, pesto and mint to the bacon mix. So let's add that. So let's spin you down. It's cross. It stays there. Okay, so I'm going to add in the, the mint. I'll add the beans in just a second, okay? So we're going to add all that mint. We're going to add some pesto, so we're going to add some green pesto, and you want one tablespoon. So one tablespoon pesto, and we're going to mix all that in. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take it off the heat again, or well, sort of halfway. That smells so good. Oh, this smells so good. Hey Molly, good to see you. Oh, thank you for um, the gift. Thank you so much. Oh, is that for, for someone, I think? Could be for something. Oh, to Melanie, it's to Melanie. So, here we go. Just gonna mix all that in. We're out to take that off the heat again, because we're just waiting for the green beans. Just to blanch for a few more minutes, and then I'll mix all that in. We're nearly done, guys. Um, and then if you've got any basil, you can add basil to this as well before we serve. So I'm just waiting for it to grill, but how easy is that, guys, to do? Really, really simple. I don't know if the onions needed to cook a little bit longer or not, so... But it looks really good. With onions, though, with red onions especially, you can eat them. You don't need to, to cook them off, um, you know, as long, so... So I'm just waiting for this to grill. Oh, it looks so nice. Oh my God, guys, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Right, I think the beans are gonna be okay, I think. I'm just waiting for them, for the chibats to cook a little bit longer. Oh my word. It looks like a pizza. It's like a goat's cheese pizza. 
brother, just drain the beans off and add them to the mix. And they've been uh, bleaching for more than 30 seconds is what it says. I just hope they're not frozen in the middle. So let's add, let's add these green beans, broad beans to the mix. Easy peasy. I'm going to keep it on the hob just to bring out some more of the flavour. Okay, let's mix all this in. I'll try and do it this way so you can see. I think I've got too many beans there as well. Let's just check on that. Oh yeah, a little bit longer. Perhaps I'm going to bring it down by a minute or so. Actually, it's on high, so I'm going to turn it down to low for the last minute. Now, you could even just mash these if you wanted to. I don't know if the beans are going to be all right, but... Actually, not too bad. They're actually really good. Mmm. Oh, dropping them on the floor. Mmm, they taste really nice. I can taste the mint as well. Maybe add a little bit more mint. Okay. So, let me just check that. Oh my god, guys. Right, that's just, I'll just leave you there actually because it says to serve then. Place the bean mix on two plates. So let's uh, pop this on the plate. Don't know if you want a few more like that. And then we're going to take the ciabattas, goat's cheese. So I've done two here. Just look, there we go guys, that is the dish. What do we think? Mark's out of 10 guys. Mark's out of 10. There's actually two ciabattas here, but I'm just gonna leave it as one for now. Let me just, it's very, very hot. But this is the, this is the grilled goat's cheese with broad bean pancetta and mint salad. So let me put that to one side. Let me just do, do the second one. So, oh, there's loads of that mixture. I have to put a few more on. I think what I would do next time, I've not tasted it yet, but have less broad beans, more of the onion, and maybe just double it up. Just double the mixture up. But I think actually it might not be too bad. I've definitely done more beans than, than I needed, so. And then I'm gonna, we're gonna do the taste test in just a second. So, I'll be back in just a minute. That's, yeah, be back in, let's lift the camera up. That's it. Let me just be back in just a minute. I'll show you, pop some more of these beans on the plate. Right, be back in just one minute, guys. One minute. And we'll cut into that goat's cheese in just a second. Goat's cheese is good. Matt, go on for a little bit more. There's another one there. Oh, it smells so nice, everyone. Right. Should we do the taste test? So this is what it looks like. So I don't know if the goat's cheese needs to cook longer. So that's a little bite. This is a really great idea. Mmm. Can't taste the cheese yet. Let's have a little bit. Oh yes. This. Oh wow. This is so good, guys. It's so simple to make. Let's try it with that pancetta and the beans. Oh. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I can taste the mint. There's a lot of mint coming through with the beans. I can taste the onions. The flavour is so simple. Mmm. Let's put a little bit on the top. I'm making this again, guys. You've got to make this, guys. You've got to make this. Mm. 
Oh my god. This is absolutely gorgeous food. Right, I will be back in just a second. I'm just checking there. Uh, I think I had a base. No, I had a top. <laughs> I had a top, not a base. Because I've got the other side, you see. I'll be back in just a second. Right, let me finish this and then we're going to do a very quick five minute quiz and it's on soups. So because the theme is soups, I can't express how much this is good food. This is absolutely gorgeous food and it's so simple. If you want the recipe, I've posted it out to Patreons. So if you're a Patreon, you'll see it available in the, in the, in the app on the, on the page. If you want to become a Patreon, you can follow me on Patreon for £3 a month to get access to all the replays. We do exclusive broadcasts on a Saturday as well, So, but I will leave this broadcast up. Um, we're gonna do a little quiz in just a second, guys. This is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. If you love cheese on toast, or like cheese, anything with cheese and onion. Mm. Right. Okay then, this is gorgeous. <laughs> quiz time. Right, so the quiz is called Souped Up. We'll just do five questions. First point, uh, you will get 10 points for being here. I will be doing um, some games tonight at nine o'clock or 4 p.m. Eastern time. So you're welcome to join me here on Twitch. Your first question then, I'm looking for the first correct answer. It's worth 10 points. Here we go. A popular accompaniment, accompaniment, accompaniment. Companion, I can't say it, to soup, crutes, crutes are what? A popular accompaniman, I can't speak tonight, to soup, crutes are what? What is crutes? I'm just going to get the answers up. Okay, so first correct answer gets 10 points. Whilst I took into this, this is so nice. You're probably best using a knife and fork for this, but... Oh my gosh. So Mel is going for bread, and um, Darby says croutons. Vancouver, uh, Rick says pea soup is bread crisps. Jay says croutons. The answer is... Large croutons. So, Darby, well done. You get 10 points. Question number two. Which of these Italian soups contain meat? Zuppa Toscana, Ribolita, or Minestrone? Which of these Italian soups contain meat? Zuppa Toscana, Ribolita, or Minestrone? It's worth 10 points. First correct answer gets the points. I'm making this again, guys. It is absolutely delicious. Okay, Brenda's. Uh, so Melly's. Uh, uh, sorry, Rick's. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Keep going back up. So Darby says minestrone. Jay says yay, Darbs. Rick says C. Melly says Toscana. Brenda's going for B. The answer is. Zuppa Toscana. So the answer was A. So who says A? Oh, I've lost the chat. Who said... Oh, I can't see it now. So it's not C. Toscana. Did I say Toscana? Yes. So Melanie, well done. Ten points. Question number three. Which famous artist created a picture of soup cans? Which famous artist created a picture of soup cans? And it's worth 10 points.
That is so nice. Okay, the beans could have been a little bit warmer, but. Okay, so what's some answers through? Could Darby say Andy Warhol? Um, <clears throat> Melanie's going for Warhol. So Soup Can's art, famous artist, it was Andy Warhol. So the points there go to Darby. Well done, Darby. Ten points. Okay, question number four. What is the key ingredient in bird's nest soup? What is the key ingredient in bird's nest soup? So ten points. Mm. I'm definitely making this again. Let's check the answer. So what is the key ingredient in bird's nest soup? Darby's going for eggs. Rick says eggs. Mike's going for eggs. Any more guesses? I can tell you. Okay, Jay's going for pasta. I can tell you, you are all wrong. The answer is dried Swiftlet saliva. <laughs> so it's dried Swiftlet saliva. Saliva? Saliva. Saliva. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> and last question, I think. Question number five. Oh, should I stay on, actually, because Gemma, Gemma's come on. I think, Ge is Gemma there? Is Gemma, are you still there? I can do a raid, but I have to stay on. Mm, mm. Okay, question number five. <clears throat> a mirapoi, I can't pronounce this, a mi mirapoi forms the base of many classic soups, but what does it consist of? A mirapoi, spelled M I R E P O I X, forms the base of many classic soups, but what does it consist of? Okay, but if Gemma, whenever you want to go live, if you want to get get ready now, I can raid you. I think I can do it on my phone, can't I? So if you want to get ready, Gemma, go live, then uh, I can do it straight after. The lag is so bad. It is bad, Jay. I'm sorry about that, I'm afraid. Okay, so I'm looking actually for three answers here. A mirapoi forms, can't spell this, let's say this, forms the base of many classic suits, but what does it consist of? I think the points there go to Brenda, says onion, celery and carrots, and the answer is onion, celery and carrots. So well done, Brenda. Ten points. Okay, we'll do a few more. I'll wait till uh, Gemma comes on. Question number six. The earliest evidence of our ancestors eating soup dates from when? The earliest evidence of our ancestors eating soup dates from when it's worth 10 points and whoever's the closest gets the points and i'm just gonna just go on to my second look at this mm. Mm. So Rick's going for 1600s, Brenda says 500 AD, Melanie's going for the Stone Age. When's the Stone Age, Melanie? Just to be precise. I reckon that's before... Uh... Um, when, when was the Stone Age? I think you could be close. I'm going to have to make this again just so I can take a picture. And Jay says Egyptian cat eye soup. 
Brendan says after fire was invented. I can't see me then. I am here, guys. There we go. Okay, any more guesses? I'm going to give the points, I think. Oh, so it's meant to going two and a half million years ago. Ooh. The answer is 6,000 BCE. 6,000 BCE. That means Melanie. Oh, Mike's just come in with 5,000 BC. So I'm going to give the points to Mike. But remember, there's a delay. So I'm going to give the points to Mike. Well done, Mike. You get 10 points. Because there's about a 20 second delay. So, okay, question number seven. I think this will be the last question, everybody. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you all for supporting these cooking Saturdays. Next month, as I say, is going to be, uh, you can go to choice, A, B or C. Choose one on the day. You can do picnic food. You can do the entree, which is the five ingredients. So your salt and pepper, oil, was it butter and I forgot the other one, water. So you can choose that, you know, do that one or you can just find something from your fridge on the day and cook something. Okay. So your last question then, guys, and then we're going to Ray, because I think Gemma could be live any second. Last question. What ingredient other than beetroot does borscht often contain? What ingredient other than beetroot does borscht, B-O-R-S-C-H-T, often contain? And I'll give you a clue. Okay, I'm not, I think we're good. I know the answer. So, last answer, guys. And I hope I can get Gemma's username right. I think it's X at the beginning. We have a correct answer. The answer is potato. So, well done, Darby. Okay, can someone just check if, Mel if um, Gemma's live? And, uh, that's it. yeah, when you're doing the, to bring up the chat, I think... Oh, can I, I can't, don't think I can type in the chat. I think it's when you come out the app. Oh, sorry, you can bring the app down and then type in the chat. So I'm about to turn you around. So thank you all for coming in, guys. I'm going to try and uh, hopefully she's live. Let me just see. Can I do it? Oh, yeah, it doesn't come up straight away. So let me just check. There's a three dots. Share stream, mute, high chat, lock screen. Uh, so as I say, Gemma's up next, and then we have uh, Darby Jones. So, uh, and then I'll be back on after that to finish you off um, with some games here on Twitch. She's just going live, okay. So you want one more question? Uh, one more question then. Chicken stew, sorry, chicken soup is also known as Jewish what? Chicken stew is also known as Jewish what? Do you know the answer to this question? Any guesses? Okay, Jim is live, okay. The answer is... Let me just check the answer again, because I thought I saw the answer. <laughs> it's penicillin. J Opera, well done. 100 points, because I didn't think anyone was going to get that. So, J Opera, well done. You're today's winner. 100 points. Well done, Jay. Right, let's see if I can do this, because um, it's not coming up. For some reason so maybe i've got to turn this i don't think it comes how do i do it how do i get the chat box up i'll oh, show chat show chat i can't comment it's not working guys so make sure you're all following gemma x it's gemma sorry <laughs> gemma one minute one minute show the chat yeah it's not coming up at all not even if i turn it round. i don't think no, it's not going to work. No chat box at all. So everyone go to Gemma. Sorry about that, guys. But thank you for coming in and I shall see you next time. Have a really great day, guys. Don't forget to follow if you're new. And uh, let's go to Gemma. Good luck, Gemma. Bye.
Bye everybody. I'm just gonna eat this now. Oh. Mm.